Okay. So let's get started. This is 3720 week two lecture one. So today we're going to start chapter five. I'm not going to take attendance anymore. Like I said, I'll take only attendance the first week. Um, this is reduction of multiple subsystems. Just a couple of terminologies that you need to be familiar with from this chapter. So, to, uh, so today what we'll do and tomorrow, we'll basically cover sections 5.1 to 5.2, like it says in the syllabus. Um, but basically tomorrow will be a problem solving session. Right? And it'll start today actually. So basically uh, the goal of this chapter is to reduce uh, reduced given block diagram into a single transfer function. Here. Transfer function. So let's start with some simple examples. So let's take, uh, for example, this is called this is the notation your book uses for a summing junction. I'll probably switch to the simulink notation. It's just the same thing. So uh, conceptually, it's the same thing. So here's one thing real simple. Let's call this minus. Let's call this R1 of S, R2 of S, and R3 of S. So what's R of S? Just looking at this picture, what's R of S? Huh? Now what is it in terms of R1, R2, and R3? Yes, it could be an error signal. Yeah, that's all it is. So this is how you simplify, if you will, a summing junction. That's what this is called. That's a terminology for this. And then you have something called as a pickoff point. So this is example one. Example two is you have a signal coming in. And I'll try to dot this so you it's clear where the pickoff point is. So this is called as pickoff point. So I'll start using these terminologies so you should be familiar with it. So this is R. What's each of these signals in terms of R? So what's the signal, what's the signal, what's the signal? So you have a signal coming in, splits like three ways, right, if you will. So what's each of these signals? No, like there's no summing junction, right? So I'm just picking it off, so it's pick off, so what is it? No, there's no amplifier. Good. If it's an ampl like if it was not an amplifier, an attenuator, sorry, if it's going to become one third. Simply, what is it? It's the same thing, right? And you'll see, it's like, oh yeah, it's so obvious. It is, but um, you'll see an example later that will actually use this, okay? All right, so any questions so far? Pretty straightforward. Okay. So here's example three which is what is called as the cascade form. Okay. So cascade form is, let's say I have a signal coming in, X, I have G1, then I have G2, all the way up to Gn. What's another term you could use for cascade form? What does this remind you of? from circuits, if you will. Huh? Series, yeah. So it's also called series form. Because the next form we'll see, it'll be called the parallel form, right? So the question is, what's the net transfer function G? Okay? 
so there is a suggestion that g of s let's put a question mark as g1 times i'm not going to write ds times g2 times well there's no g3 and g3 is implied we just put the dots gn okay so it's the product of the individual transfer functions so how do you prove this if this is true so how did you get this exactly so what is this output so i basically want g of s so here's the proof if you will so we know that y of s is this g of s times x of s correct that's what we want but how do i so this x initially goes through g1 right so if i call this y1 right i can write uh let's see i can uh okay, let's do it this way so this implies i can write y as gn times this input yes but this input is gn minus 1 times the input to the gn minus 1 block all the way up to so in other words i can do this right see if this makes sense dot 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 g1 of s times x of s right so in other words my x comes in multiplied by g1 gives me y1 okay but then y1 multiplied by g2 gives me y2 correct i can keep chaining it that way till i get this relationship yes so is equal to g of s x of s so the x of s is cancelled so there it is There's therefore g of s is g1 g2 dot 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 gn and notice another thing i did okay since this is just the product of transfer functions, it's associative, right? I can write it in any way I want, okay? So the point of what is called associativity is, let's say I have, okay, let's look at a very trivial example, G1, G2, okay? So if this is X, this signal is G1 of S times X, correct? The signal is G2 times G1 times X, correct? So if this was my Y, therefore Y of S is G2 of S, G1 of S, X of S, correct? So this is my G of S, right? It's a very... Uh, simple example well this is also pretty simple but anyway here it is okay now my point is i can rewrite this as g1 of s g2 of s x of s correct mathematically so how does the picture change what is the picture corresponding to this let me use a different color so let's see i did g2 g1 so what's the picture corresponding to this? You understand the question? Yes. So in other words, I first take x, correct? Multiply it by g2, and then I multiply it by g1. So in other words, it doesn't matter which transfer function you apply first, okay? It's kind of obvious, right? But let's look at a practical application of this. So I'll put this in quotes, but anyway, let me go back to black actually. So here is a practical 
application of associativity okay so suppose you had two linear I mean, we're talking about transfer functions so we're, I won't use the term linear systems linear time invariant systems particularly suppose I had a signal okay x of t let's look at it in the time domain but always visualize in the s domain when you're talking about transfer functions um, and then this is very noisy okay so I have an amplifier and I have a filter okay mathematically speaking these are both linear systems so it doesn't matter which one I put first mathematically okay but practically, what do I do first? Why? Yes, you don't want to amplify noise. So what comes first is the filter, then comes the amplifier. Yes? Okay? You always want to filter first and then amplify. Well, again, I don't want to say I always want to. Depends on what kind of like, depends on the application. Most for most practical applications, you filter out the noise and then amplify the necessary signal. Although mathematically, it doesn't matter what you do first. But practically, it does. Okay. All right, so that's cascade form. It's kind of obvious. But here's another, uh, here's another example. This was example three, I believe. Yeah, cascade form. So example four. Let's take our friend, the RC circuit. Okay, so I'm going to go into the S domain. So let's just call this V in. Let's call this V out. What's the transfer function? V naught over V in. Give me just the expression for it. You don't even have to simplify it. Correct, and this is by voltage divider, yeah, like Connor said, okay? All right, now is this cascade? The question is, question, is this transfer function of the circuit below, let's call this as H of S h of s times h of s that's the question so what is the circuit so i'll put everything in the s domain so is it just the product of the individual transfer function So this is the product. So that is, can I analyze? So here is our given transfer function. Yes, it's down here. I've repeated the same circuit over here. The question is, is it simply h squared? That's what I'm asking. What's the answer? Say it is or no. So, so answer is yes. Anybody say no? Okay. So the answer turns out is no, right? So unfortunately, let me put this in red. Well, it's unfortunately because you got it wrong, but that's okay. Fortunately, answer is no. Why? So, so why is it not the product? In other words, if you apply circuit analysis, there's a solution. Applying circuit analysis to the circuit above, okay? Let's call this V, I don't know, one, okay? Okay? So the only way you get h of s times h of s is, so let me put this, 
V naught is equal to 1 over SC over R plus 1 over SC times V1. Is that correct? Is that right or no? In other words, how did, like Connor gave the correct answer here. How do you get this? That's the question. Like, how do you get this expression? What rule did you use to get this expression? Voltage divider. What is, to apply voltage divider, what property from circuits do you use? Kirchhoff's current law, yes, but what how are these elements, what topology are these elements in? That's my question. They should be in series. So Kirchhoff's current law says, same current flows through them, right? So is that true here? These are not in series? Okay, they're in series, right? So is this correct? This is correct, right? Yes? But, is this correct? C times A times R oh, sorry, times 1 over SC. You all have taken 2070, right? Yeah. Is 2070 a prereq for this class or no? It's a prereq for 3050, right? or correct. So whatever, anybody here have not taken 2070? Okay, all of you have taken it because... Okay, if you have not taken 2070, you should all have taken 2060. So this is just like 1 over j omega c. Okay. Bottom line is, is this true? That is, is, whoops, what am I writing? This is Vm. So is V1 1 over sc divided by r plus 1 over sc times Vn? No, why not? It's loaded, or in other words, these two elements are not in series anymore, correct? So this is correct, but this is incorrect. Okay, is that clear why it's not the product? And now I would like to make it the product, how do I do it? Let's go back to what Ezra said, that loading concept, okay? So this network here loads this network, right? So in other words, how do I make sure that these two elements are in series? Like these are in series because this is an open circuit. So how do how do I put an like an open circuit here, but still have the output voltage that is the voltage across this capacitor, considering this circuit, be the input voltage for this circuit? You understand the question? Okay, so if you understand it, so how do I do that? So how do I isolate what, well, there are two circuit components you can use for isolation. One is the transformer. We're not gonna talk about transformers. We're not gonna use that. What is the other circuit component, if you will? Op amp. So Connor says op amp. So uh, what kind of op amp topology do you use? Put an op amp. So here is a solution. So here's the follow up network. Not, yep, not inverting. Well, simple configuration. I just want isolation, right? What op amp topology does that? Buffer. So what is the topology of a buffer? So here is negative feedback. Yes, do that. These are all grounded. Okay. Now, since the current flowing in here is approximately zero, right? These two are in series. Well, these two are still in series. But the voltage here, if you call this V1, assuming this op amps in the linear region, this is also V1 and you necessarily get that V naught over Vn now is 1 over SC 
over r plus 1 over sc square is that clear okay so any questions on this So let's look at ex another example. Example four. Let's get into example five, which is the so-called parallel form. Okay. We looked at the cascade or the series form. So let's look at this fellow. So I have a signal R of S coming in. I'm gonna split it. Okay. So again, uh, this is R. This is also R. This is also R. Let's see. So let's call this G1, G2, G3. So I get a signal. I'm going to again switch to the simulink. Sim plus minus plus. I'm going to switch to the simulink notation of the summer. So what's my Y? So this is R, splits three ways, R, R, R. I multiply by these transfer functions. I pass it through the summing junction. What's Y? Pretty straightforward. So if it's easy, just yep, that's right. So what I'm going to write, I'm just going to write it like this: times RS. Okay. So here is the net transfer function G, if you will. So it's basically it's like taking this G1 and multiplying it by this plus. By plus one, taking g2, multiplying it by negative one, taking g3, multiplying it by plus one, and then just adding them. Okay. So this is the parallel form. It's again, like I keep saying, there's nothing new in like 3720, right? It's all, oh yeah, I can do this from 3050. Okay. So let's look at the feedback form again, which we looked at last week, because there's a terminology from the book which I want to address. That is, the, what is the open loop gain? So here is our feedback form plus, let me do minus. G of S. So here is our transducer, H of S. Okay. So here is X, here is Y. So let's just derive this again. Uh, what is this signal called? The error signal? Yes. So we know that X, I'm just going to do it for negative feedback. Positive feedback will flip the appropriate sign. X. Actually, we'll do this for positive feedback shortly. It's pretty simple. X minus Y, whoops, times G of S is Y of S. Correct? And I screwed this up. It should be... This is not y anymore because the this is not unity. Uh, so this should be h times y. Yes, that's this signal to be clear. It's h of s. Oops. Times y. Yeah. So now this implies. Let's see x g. So g of s times x is y. Now be careful, right? So you multiply this by G, you get GH. You take it to the other side and then factor out a Y, you get one plus G of S, H of S, correct? So our transfer function is Y over X is G over one plus G of S, H of S, okay? So there's our feedback form, the all important feedback form. Now, what if I make this positive feedback? What changes? Let me use a different color. Put a plus here. So what changes here? What changes? 
So here it's addition. So what happens here? Huh? Minus. So this becomes a minus. Okay, that's it. Now something important. So let me use a different color on this. Because your book defines the open loop gain is defined as. So you break the loop here. Okay. So he defines it as g of s times h of s. I believe so. Let me make sure of that. Yep. Open loop. Okay. So he calls it open loop transfer function or loop gain. Okay, the loop gain I like. Okay. Because that's the gain when you go around the loop, but you break the feedback. So I'll say loop gain from now. Okay, any questions so far? This is all like pretty straightforward. All right, let's look at another example. So this basically, example six already done, example seven. You could say this is moving blocks to create familiar forms, okay? I mean, it, it's as you'll see, so let's look at A. Okay, let's look at different subparts. So if I have plus, oh, let's do it this way. Put it a, draw it a little bigger, because I'm gonna do the minus as well shortly. So let's say my R of S or, this R could also be termed, be termed your reference signal, R of T. Okay. But I don't use it because it's easy. Your book uses it. It's easy to confuse this with a ramp. Okay. It's not. Think about R as your reference input. Right. So let's say I have my X coming in here. So it's kind of like a game. Think about this that way. So I have my Y of S. Okay? Now what I can do, I would like to move this fellow. I mean, there are two ways to think about it. Move this fellow to the left past the summing junction or move the summing junction past this fellow to the right. Okay. Either way. Now, the question is, whatever I do, I don't want to change my y. Okay? So, that is, I want to keep it equivalent. It's like simplifying circuits with resistors, capacitors, combining them in series and parallel. That's what it is. It's like, it's like a fun game. Right? It's more fun than that, in my opinion. It's equivalent. It's a symbol, right? This means equivalent. So let me move this a little bit more. So what happens? Let's say, I don't know, like I said, you can think about it either way. You can think about taking this transfer function and moving it to the left or taking this summing junction and moving it to the right. Yeah. Exactly, Robin's right. Okay, so this is Robin's solution. Well, let's check if Robin's right. How would you check this? So this is what Robin claims is the equivalent. So Robin probably did it in his head, but so how do you prove this equivalence? Like this? How would you prove it? Yeah, that's all it is, right? So what is it here? Y of S is R of S plus X of S times G of S, right? So this well is equal to R of S G of S plus X of S G of S, which is exactly this, right? So let me just write this out. So Y of S here is you take R of S multiplied by G, you take X of S multiplied by G. Equivalent, right? Okay? So there's no feedback here, but let's say the summing junction uh, had a negative sign. I mean, it doesn't matter where, over here. So what changes? Just changes here, right? Like that, like that, like that, like that, right? People are like, hey, can I make this a negative G and put the plus here for the negative? Sign in the summing junction? Yes, you can. Right. 
There's no like right or wrong way except as long as the equivalence is satisfied, right? What I mean is again, I think about this as taking this transfer function, moving it past the summing junction. It's okay to think about this as taking the summing junction and moving it past to the right. Okay. Yeah. Doesn't matter, G of S. Okay. Yeah, it's all G of S. Basically, whatever this transfer function is, you move this to the left, you have to multiply each of these signals by the transfer function. That's the point, right? Okay, so let's look at this fellow. So let's do a G here. Ah, let's do an H. Doesn't matter what it is, okay? H of S, so let's see, plus, plus. I'm just going to do the positive. Like, just a summing junction. There's no feedback here, per se. So here is R, and here is our Y. What is this equivalent to? In the sense, let's say I take this transfer function, move it past the summing junction, what happens? So let's say I put this over here. Here's my Y. So finish this. In the sense, how does your R and how does your X, if if it changes, how does it change? Yes, Connor's right. Exactly. That's all it is. Right. So one over H. And again, you can prove this. Let's just prove this. Okay. So this implies Y of S is R of S H of S plus x of s, correct? So what does this imply? y of s equals h of s times r of s plus 1 over h of s times x of s. And we'll assume implicitly that when we do this, that we are not dividing by a 0. Okay? Then you'll be in trouble. Right? So this is equivalent to H of, let me just put it in that form, like the same order. R of S, H of S, plus X of S, okay? So pretty standard. Let's have more fun with this. Okay. And there are, I'm only going to cover like what's in the book in the sense, these are not the only simplifications. Okay? There are a lot more. But you, the point of doing this is to for you to get the idea. So let's try this one. There's a pick off point. Pick this signal off. I multiply this by G of S. Then this goes off, this goes off. And this keeps going. So here is R of S. Okay. So let's say, I don't know, let's call this Y1, Y2, which is Y2 is R and Y3 is R. Y1 is G times R, correct? So let's say I take this transfer function and I move it past the pickoff point to the left, or you can think about taking this pickoff point and moving it to the right. But for me, it's always more obvious to, I mean, for me, it's more intuitive to move the blocks. So let's say I do this. Okay? So how does this change, if any? So here is R. What about this fellow, the top one? There's 1 over G and 1 over G here, okay? Because you want Y2 and Y3 to simply be R of S, correct? So what about this line? <coughs> so it's a gain of 1, right? That's it, correct? And there is the more, well, I don't know if it's more obvious, but let's say I have G, and we'll do a more complicated example shortly. Okay, so here it is. Okay? So I'm going to move this fellow past the pickoff point to the right. So how does it change? 
Yep, all multiplied by G. Right. So here is the pickoff point. Right. So I take this multiplied by G. I take this multiplied by G. I take this multiplied by G. It's done. Or this is Y1. This is Y2. And this is Y3. Okay. And there's a nice example in your book. I'm not going to do the example because you can look at it on your own. You should. Or two examples, actually. There are two nice examples. So let's look at the skill assessment exercise. Any questions so far? I like 14 minutes, so it should be nice. So this is skill assessment 5.1 on page 245. Okay. By the way, speaking about skill assessment, your homework one is assigned today, and it's problems 5.2, 5.5, 5.21, and 5.60. is due next Monday. The homework is not tough, but if I remember right, it's long, right? So I recommend you do like one problem today, one problem in a couple of days, like that, right? Because the block diagrams are kind of like little messy. And you're all, let's say we should cover signal flow graphs and Mason's rule by the end of this week. You're welcome to use it, right? You know, the question says you can't use it. I don't remember, right? And so I don't care what techniques you use as long as you justify mathematically how it works. If you know a root locus, for example, I'm just throwing it out, just use it. You don't need it differently for this chapter, but as a more specific example, if you know advanced techniques, just use it. Okay, so the question is, find T of S is C of S over R of S. Since my handwriting is so beautiful, so let's look at, ooh, I do have my electronic version of the text. Awesome. So uh, since I have the electronic version, whoops, let's just quickly preview what the homework is. So I can even move. Hello. So I need my keyboard. Move. Move. So let's look at this is 579. Um, I think 560. Let's look at 560 first, 543. Ah, come on. get out my keyboard I will 52 okay so here is 560 for example okay so this shows you how to and it does ask you to use Mason's rule so it's fine right but it shows you how you can look at it as an amplifier circuit what kind of an amplifier is this I mean it tells you where it is but it's a non-inverting amplifier right What's the gain of this non-inverting amplifier? What's the gain? It's 1 plus RF over RI, correct? So it shows you how to view this. So you can see this as a um, feedback system where A is the open loop gain multiplied by the feedback gain. So it's, it's very interesting, right? So it's uh, you should that's your last problem actually, and I'm really not going to show you the other problems because I just can't scroll without my keyboard. So hopefully let me see if this works. Two seventy five. Oh, not bad. That's 248. Mine was on 245. Okay. Okay, here it is. Okay, so here is skill assessment 5.1. So 
So a couple of points I want you to notice, all right? Number one, I may not, oh, okay, I'll do this in MATLAB, I'll do a MATLAB demo in lab and record it, but you have MATLAB commands, which actually allow you to build the system, okay? Remember last week we used feedback, correct? There are other forms like that, okay? So how do you specify, for example, the cascade form? How would I do that? Let's say I have this as H1, this as H2, for example. Yeah, you just use the multiply operator, okay? It's overloaded. It's cascade, okay? For example. So there is a way to do this in MATLAB, I'll demo this in lab. Um, but for now, let's look at this picture here. All right, so how do we do this? There are, there are many ways to do this, okay? There's not one way. So there's one potential solution. So you wanna look at how this block diagram, like, I mean, what are the different subsystems? It's a reduction of multiple subsystems, right? So what's going on here? Any ideas? So what what what's the first simplification I can obviously do? Yeah, take the two S's and multiply them because this cascade form. So let me but before that, okay, actually let's take even a step back. So what do you want to do is whenever you look at these block diagrams, you should start thinking about what kind of operations am I doing? Like to the signal. Okay, mathematical operations. So if it's S, what is the mathematical operation in the, well, it's the time domain, right? That's how you look at it. So what are you doing to the signal coming in? You're differentiating, so you're doing the second derivative, right? You're integrating out probably the error, okay? This looks like a, a two derivatives on an integral controller. I'm just throwing stuff out. Here's a differentiator, here's an integrator. That's how you should look at, start looking at this. Okay, any questions on that? So, let me try to, let me do this, uh, actually. And oh yeah, this is the other thing about your homework. Uh, let me just leave it as black. You'll have to do a lot of redrawing. Like I said, it's like simplifying circuits. That is combining resistors, capacitors, inductors, series, paddle, voltage sources. So you, again, you wanna start on your homework early. Right? Do the first problem today, so work on it like that. Divide and conquer. So this cascade form. So here we go, redrawing. Okay, plus minus minus. So here is R of S. So this is S squared. Then what? So so when you redraw it, you got to be careful that you don't change the system, here is plus, here is plus, and then this gets picked off right here, goes through, here is one over s, here is c of s, how much time do I have? At six minutes, maybe we can finish this in six minutes, we'll see. So there's a pick off point right there, you have a one over s over here, this gets added in, and then this fellow gets picked off and gets fed back through a differentiator So now what? Any ideas? So again, look at the big picture, right? So like, uh, because like I said, there's not one way to do this. And maybe the way I do it is not the best way to do it. I don't know. Right? Best way means getting to the answer the quickest, if you define best like that. So what can I do? Mm-hmm. How do you simplify that? So Robin's right. It's like, ah, okay, let's see. Can I simplify this? It's probably the easiest to attack. How? People are nodding their heads. So what is the equivalent? So if a signal comes in, 
another tip, right? Just label these. Just make sure you don't reuse the same labels. Let's say this is X. This is Y. Okay? So Y is this point right here. Can I write an equivalent transfer function for this? So if you think about it, in the beginning, if you're not, if you don't have enough practice with this, it's, it's always okay to go back to first principles. So this signal over here is S squared times X, correct? This signal over here is one over S times X, correct? So Y is X of S times S, X of S times S squared plus one over S, right? So how do I simplify this? So that's cubed plus one over s, but you don't have to write it like that. You can just use it as s squared plus one over s. You can anyway, whatever you feel comfortable with. Like I said, as long as it's correct. Okay. So plus minus minus. Okay, let's just do it as cubed plus one. So here is my y still. Here is my x, and notice I leave these signals in. In the sense you know what happened, All right? So this is s cubed plus one over s. So here is my y. Okay. Here's my c. All right, and we are running out of time. Oh, mm, okay, sorry. So let's finish. So we're running out of time, but let's see. There's, there's a one crucial step, in my opinion, after this to simplify this. So what would you, let's address that and then I'll stop, okay? So, so far it's good, right? Now think, this is where you gotta think. So how do you simplify this? This form we didn't talk about. Yeah, many ideas. Yeah, Robin. Yeah, how would you do that? How would you rewrite this summary? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to interrupt Robin right there. He's right. So you can start doing all the signals, okay? And you can try to get C over R. Probably work. But maybe this is not simpler. I don't know. So this is what I think about, okay? What I can do is I can split the summer, and you'll see why shortly. This comes out, all right? Plus minus so I'll put a this is equivalent to so these are all equivalent question mark so take a look at this this we know for sure is equivalent yeah so let's put that equivalent symbols in there so you know what's going on and so here is y I just wrote this in our more familiar forms. That is, I put the feedback. You can leave the feedback about. Right? There's nothing wrong with it. Now, the question is, are these equivalent? And we'll continue that tomorrow. Well, I'll address continuing it tomorrow shortly. But now you see that this is feedback form, yes? Cascade form. Feedback form. Make sense? So I, I think it's better than you can trace signals, but if you can do this, since you know what the transfer function is for feedback form, you're done, okay? So let me stop the lecture. Okay, we're out of time.